Hey everyone, welcome to Arches Garage. And this video, a Briggs & Stratton 190cc engine. It's an overhead valve, so it's a newer engine. Um, and this one's a horizontal shaft engine, and this is part of a series, and we'll get to that in a minute. What are we gonna be doing, Arch? Well, on this segment, right, we're, I'm gonna show you what I did and what I generally do to go over the ignition system. Uh, so some tips and tricks. So if you, whether you think you don't have spark, or you do have spark, but you want to recap it and clean it up. And in this case, right, I refurb the whole motor. So I'm going to be showing you uh, what I like to do. And well, we're going to talk about it in the video, but I want to remind you guys, um, I took this engine apart. This is made from two. So it's one engine made from two. Um, they were both not functioning. One of them was completely rotted out, took on a lot of motor, uh, a lot of water into the motor. Uh, so I put, uh, I pulled the head off. I reconditioned the head meaning that I took the valves out, I lapped them back in, I cleaned everything up, I smoothed off all the surfaces, and uh, then I put a new head gasket on. Uh, in the cylinder, we cleaned the cylinder out, we did a little bit of honing, you know, got everything back together again, torqued that down, we put a HIPAA carburetor on it. So I pretty much kind of took the best parts that I had from both of these motors and shoved them all into one, and now I've got a great motor sitting you know, on the side. Whereas before I had two, uh, taking up all that space. Now I got a good running motor ready for whatever application comes along. So like I said, in this segment, we're going to kind of just go over what I like to do. Um, so I've had some people ask me, uh, you know, like, what do you do for a gap? And, you know, um, so I have other videos on this as well. I have a couple of videos on testing coils, all kinds of different coils uh, with an ohmmeter. So you might want to check that one out. And within some of my other builds, usually on vertical shaft lawnmower engines or whatever, I generally show quite often what I do to a flywheel and cleaning it up and, and how I gap everything. Um, but this is a standalone and it should be pretty short. So we'll get to that. I just want to remind you guys that uh, it doesn't matter really what engine because I do the same thing to every engine. It, it doesn't matter and generally speaking the gaps are the same so we'll talk about that when we get into the video I'll see you guys there right stay tuned Let's get this thing off and clean up the magnet and everything. It is so close. It's riding. I can hear it scraping. You can say, rust doesn't matter. It doesn't. Yes, it does. Okay. I insist. I, say, I insist and I say it does. Therefore, it is. All right. Let's just get this thing up. Clean it up. We'll regap it. Make sure it's tight. Make sure everything is good. I'm pretty sure it works because I seem to remember earlier when we were compression testing or whatever. I think I got electrocuted. All right. We'll put a little oil on this before we put it in. Come here, yo. Oh, wow. All right, let's move you out of the way. And, you know, these get all nasty and rusty, and that causes grounding issues. It's not grounding to the, the, to the chassis or the body of the motor. Oh, that's kind of important, right? Otherwise, you'll have intermittent spark or no spark or, you know, yesterday's spark. The low spark of high heel boys. I don't know if you want that. Let's, we're gonna run this on the wire wheel and I wanna clean this on the wire wheel, the, the, where it mounts, right? And has to ground, make an electrical contact. And in there, it looks okay. We'll just clean it all up and clean this up and then we'll clean the magnet. I'll be back. I'm gonna get these first, so I don't forget. We're going to clean the whole thing up. Use a wire wheel, too. You don't have to make it mint. Just, you know, de-louse it. All right, let's install. You see it? <clears throat> Move the magnet away. It's all nice and clean. Blow it out. It says this side out. For people like me. All right, plug it in. Goes up underneath there like that. And I, I put a little bit of, just a little oil on the threads, right? That's all we want. <clears throat> I 
You know, we're kind of doing this upside down for you, which means I have to think upside down. <clears throat> we just want to snug it. Is that the wrong one? Yeah. Wrong size. What is this, like quarter? I keep changing it. Yeah, it's quarter. Okay, I'm just going to snug it. And then we'll bring the magnet around to here, right up. All right, so now we can put our 10,000s in. And I like to go tight. All right, we'll just hold it there. And then we can loosen up the... Because I just fingered it tight, you know, finger tight. Let's suck in, just like that. And then we'll tighten it. Now, I always say that you want to, especially on Briggs, right, they, they're laminates, so you got to pull them in and let them compress. I use quarter drive. Never use anything like automatic. And I just, and a stubby wrench, so I don't, you know, kill it. That's it. Now I'll show you a little, little trick. My tool back. Hold on. I'll be right there. God, you guys are so impatient. Just in case this thing is like wet operation, right? You know, you can keep the rust off and, and the electrical issues, right? Put some on the the coil itself, the magneto. They call it the magnetron. I think is that what they call it. I don't know, something like that. I forget what Briggs calls it. I often say it, and I forget. She was leaking a little bit of oil, leaving it sit there like that. Then we'll put a little bit on, on the flywheel, right? And that'll keep it from rotting up, especially in wet operation. It stays on there. You can also use Cosmoline, which is awesome stuff. And if you want to improve the gasket, too... Gasket performance works good. We got it pretty hot. I mean, it's warm. So I want to put this on, I, off camera, I cleaned it up. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. I remember we washed it. Now usually I use this, my nice chain lube, but I ordered it over two weeks ago and it's not here and I have like very little left. We're going to store this, this engine for a while. Just pull it all the way through a bunch of times and then wipe out the gook, you know, the extra oil. So we're just going to Pull the carburetor out of our way. We're not going to have to disconnect everything because we're not at that point yet. So for the how to install a carburetor, right? Generally speaking, right, this would already be in place, right? You wouldn't be doing what we're doing with this engine. So now I'm just going to kind of toss it back. Now there's this little kind of fingers here. You kind of have to get all that in together at the same time, and. Hold on. There we go. Is it going? Yeah. It slides in like that. Let's make sure it lines up. Yeah, it's starting to line up. Those fingers help to hold this this upper steel guard. Okay, so I tried to get the best shots I could get, you know, but I'm still learning how to make videos and still setting up and working with cameras, so bear with me on that. I think I did a, a pretty good job. And it's pretty straightforward, as you can see. It's very simple to do. And what I find very often is that cleaning everything up and getting everything sweet again often solves a lot of problems. Intermittent spark issues, intermittent running issues, sometimes even the ability to, you can't even shut it off. Uh, so that's it in this one. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. And I'm going to try to put a tile somewhere over here, right? Over there or, or over there right for the folder where this motor exists and 
come to my home page and check that out and uh don't forget you know if you can hit the like and subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next one